Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education Budget Workshop for February 9th, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First up, well, we're starting with our budget. Mrs. Towers. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. Tonight we bring before you our draft budget presentation. So in front of you is white binders. We're gonna go through each tab as listed. And there's reading material off to the left. And under the first tab, if we go ahead and turn the page, we're gonna look at your draft budget summary page. And this draft budget summary page, the items are listed by category and not necessarily funding priority. The amounts are subject to change. When we take a look at the revenue numbers, you see how it has zero here. So I wanna go into some detail. The state revenue numbers were issued in draft form and we're told that they need to be updated. There's some calculations that need to be revised. So instead of sharing that number, um, we're going to um, leave it at zero for now. We should have updated numbers. We're promised by Friday for the state aid. What we're also waiting on is the MOE calculation and we're promised Friday as well. Normally it's MOE is um, basically your maintenance of effort, the county funding piece because of the different law changes and where the three year rolling average comes into play and if the two and a half percent kicker is also gonna be included. The state is seeking legal advice on this. And we're told by Friday, we should have the form to calculate maintenance of effort as well. By this Friday? Yes. And the superintendent's weekly transmittal. So we're waiting on those numbers there. So instead of bringing numbers to you that are gonna be subject to change, we thought we'll just go ahead and put zero for now, but know that it will be updated soon. Before I get into the expenditures, I want to talk a little bit more about the budget process. The budget process was over several months and a lot of different stakeholders and I want to thank everyone for their help. School level, principals, supervisors, executive team, Dr. Salins, uh, just input from the community, from the budget survey. It was all very helpful in building and bringing this to you tonight to take a look at. So what we do have to go over is take a look at where we are as far as expenditures, the needs of the district, the different placeholders, and then go from there. So under this first part here, there's proposed savings. We recognize five placeholders for salary savings for um, attrition, basically um, and retirement and uh, filling in at a, at a younger um, or less step scale. There is money budgeted in prior years of an instructional supervisor. This is under category uh, three. Category three is for teachers. So we asked to go ahead and remove this from the budget at 117,383. Number three we bring before you tonight is a reduction in contracted services. This was listed under category five as other um, psychological services. This position has been filled internally and you'll notice it when we go into the five year expenditure categories comparison that is it actually now it's a salaried position. So we have actually brought that internally as a salaried position. Uh, number four, reduction. We had budgeted 40,000 for other compensation. So we were gonna ask to realize savings there. The next one here under five is a reduction of special ed salaries. This was special ed salaries that positions that were taken out of the operating budget and transferred to the blueprint. This year we're gonna see it, we have to bring it back in in 23. So we'll see that below. A reduction in salaries um, from special ed to contracts for speech pathologists. I, um, every year we bring before you a budget amendment to take from salaries and put in contract services um, with the idea being under this one and talking to Ms. Smith that if there's someone that is qualified that we can get internally, we certainly will. Um, but for right now, the, we have to do contract because it's just the availability of people and staff. 
Um, but if, and they actually are local, the contract that we use are from. So it, it is an opportunity to maybe as um, someone comes available to go ahead and get that, fill that position internally. Then uh, we have a reduction in special ed transfers of 42,000. So the proposed savings that we're gonna take away from the budget is 834,383 proposed. <clears throat> The next one, line number eight, I want to talk about health care insurance. We are projected with a 5% increase at 5% um, is with the understanding as long as um, the county agrees and the Board of Ed agrees to actually use some fund balance. So this is actually using some reserve balance from our ESMEC. From our fund balance in the uh, yes. insurance part of it. Yes. Yes, so it softens the blow down to 5% for the employees. So when we sit there and say we're going up 5%, is that what is actually going up and we're going to reduce it down because we're going to take some from fund balance or is it more than 5%? It's actually going to be more than 5%. This actually takes it down to a 5% increase. The board's share, which is 90% of most policies. Yes. But that's only because we're using the health care reserves. Correct. If it, if it was not, I, I, um, it's 1.7 jointly. And we have to ask the county commissioners for permission for that. Um, yes. And then as well as the Board of Education. So we're working on the letter. It'll be a joint letter from the, the counties to the Board of Ed. And they're part of that insurance group too. Yes. Yes. We are actually partnered together, listed together. Um, we air our funds are jointly together. Are they, are they, are they, do they run together? Yes, they're jointly together. But they don't have the same percentage as we do. Correct. That's how it was established years ago. Uh, we are partnered with the county in our ESMIC Healthcare Trust. It's one line item, Queen Anne's County. Can they take money out of that and use for their, subsidize their insurance? Uh, if we agree to it or they can? Yes, yes, it's a joint agreement, joint letter that we would bring before you. And then they would bring before the commissioners too. Is it a, and I know this is something down the road and I've discussed it in the past years. Since we're not under the same percentages with their employees and our employees, besides getting on the same, that would be another reason, not for each person who governs to pay more, I understand, to get this coordinated where we're the county and the board are lockstep as far as what we, what we offer our employees. Yes. Um, one item of note here, what we're seeing is unprecedented as far as health care rates increase because of the pandemic, people postponed going to the doctor. <clears throat> now that the facilities have opened up, we're seeing an increase in that. So we're hoping that we'll end up seeing it flatline and actually drop a little bit. But here we have to account for at the current rate that um, the claims are being processed. So there's a placeholder of 680,000 there. Under line item nine, we bring before you a um, placeholder for copiers. And, and when I see the savings of 834, now I'm taking 680, so this right-hand side's a running thing as where we are mm -hmm. negative or positive, and that's just a running line. Yes, correct, correct. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit more about our copiers. Our copiers in the district are, are old. Um, uh, mm -hmm. This would be an agreement to have a five-year lease with 54 copiers. Um, we had a joint team. It was facilities, the purchasing department, and we went to, we have 10 different vendors, copier vendors, just to let you know where we are. And we went to each of those vendors and asked them, what's your best, contract that you had that we can piggyback off of. We had a, a valuation team of five different people from different departments to take a look at that contract, those contracts. And then from there, we had narrowed it down to three. And out of those three, they came in and presented. So we wanted to make sure that even though we were piggybacking off a contract, it was actually for the, the best value and price as well too. So we will um, bring this before you, the recommendation in March on this, but know that the copiers we currently have now, the parts are hard to replace. Um, one school called me in particular last week, they had six of them down at one time. So it's, it's really become an issue as far as um, having reliable um, 
machines in place. So once, uh, if this is approved and we have it earmarked, we'll have a steady, um, every five years, the, the, um, the, the old will go out and the new will come in. And, and that way you have a consistent fleet. And also be in mind that there's actually a click per rate. So when you, when the old copiers get older, the click per rate goes up. So we're actually paying more per clicks now than if we were with new copiers too as well. So we have to keep um, that in mind too, that we're actually spending more because of our machines are so old. The next one, number 10, is there is an allocation that we are seeing from state aid that are coming through through TSI for $244,879. We currently have budgeted for tutoring at 175, dollars so 69879 would take us to the $244,879 that would be required by law. And then the next couple items here, they're listed. I'm not sure if you want me to go over each individual one, but they actually are listed by categories. So uh, lines 11 through 22 are gonna be your category one expenditures, your, your administration. So there's different requests here that um, have come through. We have it for general support for your ANS retreat. You have your respondents lockdown, power school training, professional development training, district-wide climate survey, uh, the blueprint meetings, um, allowance for that, office supplies. The Office of Accountability didn't have a budget before, so this is actually um, providing them a, some type of budget funds to use um, that they are in desperate need of. HR for recruitment and retention, they're asking for 20,000 dues and subscription, an increase of 10,500. Uh, printing and publishing, 2,500. Licensing, and this is for the Employee Access Center at 9,500. And the Employee Access Center, that will give employees the opportunity to go and view their pay stub at any time, view their W-2s, and there's even an option to go in and update their W-4s, any type of uh, tax material, material that they have. They have their own private user ID as well as password there. The next one is computer maintenance at 2,500. So that is all the requests that we have there for the category one. Under category two, that's gonna be your mid-level administration. The assistant superintendent materials of instruction at $10,000, meetings and conferences at 5,600, printing and publishing at 3,650, licensing at 20,000. And then we go into the allocations by the curriculum and instruction departments. And I'd like to um, talk a little bit more about why you're seeing such a long list of items here. In years past, it has they haven't had a budgeted line item. They've actually had to wait until the end of the year and request the funds as they became available at the end of the year. So as you know, as part of the budgeting process, the budgeting is your backbone of your organization. So instead of them waiting to the end of the year, they have an allotment that they know what they are um, um, budgeted to spend, and then they have, and they can um, plan accordingly. So I, I can understand the frustration that the curriculum instruction have felt over the years when they haven't had a flat amount, and they've had to ask and unsure of if it's a if it's a go or not. So these next items are really to identify this and to and to have that um, budgeted line items for them. Uh, the first one here is increased pre-K teacher salary at half day at Mad Peak, 37,500. For um, ELA meetings and conferences, 4,000. Materials for ELA, um, the kits at 4,000. Foundations teacher notebooks at 15,000. Materials, uh, consumables here under your um, different sciences program at your elementary school, middle and high school there is listed. You have sciences meetings and conferences, your environmental literacy, different um, meetings, curriculum writing, as well as PE for um, professional development with co and concussion training. 
your, your mathematics conference, foreign language for your digital licensing, annual memberships, different conventions that are listed here as well, your art dues and subscriptions, uh, art conference. So it's actually broken down by the different uh, CNI supervisors, what their requests were. Arts for materials, for art science, your early education, your capstone at 7,500, your ProQuest at 3,500, library, uh, different dues to associations, and then you get into music for middle and high, different band equipment, so it's available to all students at 40,000, uh, contract services for licensing, annual memberships, uh, contracted services for festivals, uh, let's see, instructional equipment at 2,000, consumables for Discovery Tech Book at 17,530, and then we go into social science with your um, DBQ project online at 6,188, a stock market game at 5,000. The next item, line 65, is gonna be a placeholder for textbooks. And that number used to be capital. Correct. That's Correct. a big number, but because of accounting and the way we've been doing things, is not the proper way to do it. The county's been funding that in the past over the years, but through capital money, not necessarily uh, operating money. Right, uh, th through the, the state of Maryland, they actually, MSDE, they are requiring us because we have to account for every dollar per student. Mm -hmm. And if this was in capital, this is school construction related and it would not be counted and we would not be recording it correctly. And so we need to actually put it in our operating budget where it is required to be placed. So even this is something, and I understand the commissioner's view on this, but this is something that's gone from capital. They've done over the years on a regular basis. Now it's gonna to have to be moved into operating. Yes, yes. And we are required to do this by MSDE. Uh, the next one is the allocation and contracted services. So as you saw up top with the salary allocation, we reduced the salary, special ed salaries. We're actually putting that into the contracted services at the 275,000. The dues and subscriptions, $700 for student services. Stipends for our student services for um, your counselors at $25,410. Under 69 here, allocation for student services for hearing equipment calibration at 300 meetings and conferences for student services as well as supplies. Increase in healthcare salaries. Uh, this was to adjust to actual and we'll see that in the five year comparison when we talk about it. We have a, a placeholder for um, transportation at 135,000. We have vehicle insurance that we need to adjust to actual for 30,000. In here, there's a request for allocation for two routes, uh, two additional route dr drivers. It says a total of four employees at 260,000. We have the allocation for the driver substitutes and vehicle attendance at 125,000. Uh, field trips for performances at 2,000. Here we have a placeholder for leasing two buses a year at 40,000. The next under operation is contracted services, the time and attendance fees and e-finance. Uh, that would be to upgrade what we currently have. The next line items are for maintenance, uh, the maintenance budget to increase for 290,000 for flooring, field house and can canopies at the um, Ken Island High School, as well as electrical work and door access that's needed for 14,000. The next item, contracted services for painting, this would be at Bayside and Centerville Elementary for 380,000. We have the Johnston controls here for inspections at 30,000. There's a placeholder for vehicles at 20,000. And uh, furniture and equipment for engineering lab tables at 24,260. The next two are for leasing for the laptops and Chromebooks, one for 550,000 as well as the Chromebooks for fifth to eighth grade at 280. And that used to be in capital. Yeah. Yes. 
And then uh, we have an increase for capital outlay furniture and fixtures for non-instructional type of um, items at 14,500. Can I ask about the instructional equipment? Does that include maintenance contracts, replacements and stuff like that? Or is it just for the hard, the initial hardware? Uh, for the laptops? Mm -hmm. I would have to check with technology and I have to get back to you on that. I, I think it en encompasses everything, okay. but I will, sh I will make note of that. I just want to comment that this list seems very long this year and obviously we're trying to do that realignment. So next right. year you're really going to look at cost of doing business and when we say cost of doing business, we're only going to be adding things that might be fluctuating such as um, if we have a, a bad snow year and, and fuel needs to be adjusted or something. But the cost of doing business typically isn't very nitty gritty and very lengthy like this. Right. It's just that we are attempting to do a, a realignment right now. Right. So I wanted to make sure that everybody understands that. But some of the things that, that needed to sneak into the, the budget and as it, it relates to our operating budget were the textbooks, but also some other things like the leasing, the um, the painting, I mean, this is listed as based at elementary school and Centerville Elementary School, but the following year that, that painting line would stay in the budget, obviously, and it would be other schools so that we could rotate through that. Right. Um, typically, those types of things have stayed kind of um, in, in the background, and then we get to that point where we need to do it, and mm -hmm. they've fallen off the plate because other priorities have come um, at the end of the year. So this will make sure that they don't fall off the plate. If they're embedded into the operating budget, then every year Mr. Pinder has an appropriate budget to be able to maintain the schools as it relates to painting. And he would be on a rotation schedule through those. Um, so I, I know it seems very cumbersome right now, but I think it's just a little bit of growing pains as we get through this budget cycle, do a little bit of alignment. And I think next year will be much better. So these are, but these again are wish, these are wish, not necessarily things that we're we are going to do, or do we have to do all of these? No, these are things that were put in that um, request for next year that we are planning to do based on our allocations once we get our firm numbers on page one in categories one through four. So once we firm up those numbers, then yes, these are these are not wish lists. These are the things that, and we'll get to the wish list part. Okay. These are things that we really need to, to in order to just, um, you know, operate as a business. Because you know, these last are things year. that we really need to do. So the call, we call that the cost of doing business. Really, we're going to get Jane's not quite finished. She's going to yes. go to the next page. Okay. Yeah, and then we're going to get to those things that are more of a wish list. Even though we really do need them, it's something that could we defer them if we had to. Okay. Jane, just a quick question, number 68, where it talked about the allocation for student services seconds. It said summer additional hours. Is this to accommodate during summer school or what? It would be like enrollments, Ms. Bennett. Like enrollments, the counselors go in and they would, because there's a lot of um, transition during the summer, mm -hmm. so the counselors would be able to go in and um, work with families that are coming in for enrollment of new students. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not such a huge lift right at the beginning. Okay. They kind of do it throughout. And is that because they are 10 month employees? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 10 or 11. It just depends right. on the level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so under additions, we have a placeholder listed here for salary enhancements at 2.6. We're going to work in that hourly and sub rate increase at 100,000. National Board Certified Teachers. We have 26 in the county, and uh, it's 10,000 per, per um, teacher. The state, under state aid, were proposed to receive 100 and either six or 9,000 on this. So the difference we'd have to make up in this. So it's at uh, 260,000. We'll receive some state funds, but we have to capture the whole cost here under expenditures. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next two were under bl Blueprint. Blueprint is actually going away and rolling up into state aid. So we actually, under Blueprint, there was a grant called the School for Special Education. It had four teachers and a half secretary salary. That's no longer going to be in 23. So we are rolling it into the operating budget here for uh, 23, as well as the mental health coordinator. It was, it's currently under Blueprint but it's not listed separately in 24. 
at um, 83,333. And then the other um, items, 94 through 110, they're requested additions, uh, but due to um, lack of new funding, it's going to be listed here. It's not necessarily in priority order. We'll get that in priority order for you. But as funding sources or additional funds become available, they would actually move up into the operating budget. So, so Jane, I apologize for interrupting you, but just for the board's um, knowledge. So the 7 million, just over 7 million on line item 93 is where we would need that we would need $7 million to make that whole budget work. Yes. So as it relates to the mm -hmm. first page, once we get all those numbers, right. our total unrestricted revenue would need to equal that $7 million. Yes. This would be over and above that. So if you go all the way down to 110, that, that total of nearly 9 million is where it would be. So we're, we're looking at, just to give them, some people haven't been, I'm sure yes. this is new process for them. And, and it's very complicated and I need to get my checkpoints in place too. So um, so yeah, so the, the bottom line would be that 9 million, but but just to do the things, the cost of doing business and to move forward with, with a solid budget is about a $7 million price tag. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm not sure if you, do you want me to go line by line on the other items listed? Um, Sure, I mean. Okay. Um, so under 94, we have pre-K, uh, two teachers and two aides. This potentially could be transitional funds. We haven't gotten a clear answer from the state yet on how we can ask for reimbursement on that. So that's why there's a question mark there. We're gonna um, hopefully find out soon. So that's 237,210, as well as uh, uh, Churchill Elementary, one teacher, one aide and possible transitional funds in their restricted funds. But we do need to be mindful that um, these positions, if they're not funded through transitional, how do, how do we incorporate them in the operating budget going forward with pre-K? Increase allocation from teacher specialists to assistant principals, the cost of that would be 72,000. Increase the um, psychologist from moving from contracted services to a 50-50 grant position, 50,000. Allocation for a rise, five hour um, para to go to full time. Guidance counselor positions two at um, Centerville Middle and uh, Stevensville uh, Middle School at 218,400. New positions for PE and health, three of those at uh, 242,955. EL teachers, five, and you can see the different schools at 371, 425. An early um, learning coordinator. There's so many um, things coming down, especially with the enhancement to the pre-K programs. Um, we're going to look at maybe an additional staff member at 90,325. A pre-K coordinator, a kindergarten teacher at uh, Centerville Elementary, a, ki a kindergarten teacher as well at Ken Allen Elementary, full-time um, sped pairs at. Uh, uh, Kennard as well as Ken Allen Elementary, combining those part-time to full-time positions, two maintenance positions, increase accountability line for um, performance matter item banks at 11,577, and then increase allocation for school health, and that's for the new Comar regulations at 5,000, and a new position for unified arts teacher at 74,285. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. All these positions, um, the amounts, do they also include taxes, Social Security, and Medicare? Yes, and then uh, the health care piece, yes. And okay, summary for that. Thank you. And, yes. And these, these uh, all of these requests, as a matter of fact, came out, came through the budget process as we right. met with every team and then came together. And currently, as they stand, are not in a prioritized order. So that would be something that I, I kind of wanted to wait to see how the numbers fall out and then see if we have monies for this before we spend, uh, you know, an exorbitant amount of time uh, prioritizing them, which the, the team would take a hard look yeah, at. Because two, two loud things I heard in, the, in that round table was the, the counselors and the uh, health teachers. Correct. I mean, it was very, Yeah. Uh, I probably missed something, but the health teachers, was that coming from that's the state? That's an man, unfunded mandate. But uh, so that's, when you say this here, this uh, number 100 is basically a mandated it is. It thing. is. So it's mandated. When we're looking at that $242,000, that's not, I mean, 
I see optional. what you're saying. It's not. I, I see what you're saying. But what would happen is that we would either have exorbitant class sizes would be so big, or we'd have to push that requirement down a year because yeah. obviously we have them for four years to get that requirement in. So we'd have to push the requirement instead of trying to get it done within that ninth grade year. We'd have to push it down to their tenth or up to their tenth grade year. Um, Amy, did you want to add anything more? Well, than just that? The, and and we would not be able to offer the other courses right any additional that's right. true any additional electives help PE that's it right so we would just be able to offer the bare minimum and not any electives for our, our upper level students I also think that a top priority is are the two maintenance positions mm -hmm. yeah I mean let's be honest well and and really all of these things are kind of they are prioritized already because we had uh, I don't remember how many requests um, that was in our last presentation but we had over 425 so, requests. over 420 so these are just skimming Positions? off the top of those four uh, no, oh, requests. just things okay. just requests okay so these are pulled off skimmed off the top of those 420 requests they're just right now not prioritized you know on this small list although when we talked about the guidance and we we're gonna get that presentation later about the survey that that seemed to be something that was mm -hmm. It was a high priority. Very, it was a high priority. Yes, very, was, was very much so. Yeah. And, 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 you know, one thing, and I think you've been very good and upfront with our commissioners at the meetings. We have our discussions on once a month. Uh, um, over a million dollars in this budget is capital. Not was capital. Was, right. that we're we're yes. rolling some of this in there. This is a big number. It's probably it might, very it, close to $2 million. It might not be obtainable, all of it. Yeah. I mean, we don't know how the state's going to fund it. Right. Because there's a lot of this going on, which I don't think you know yet, do you? I'm sorry. No. What, 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 what the state? Numbers. What our state numbers are? I mean, we don't even. No, we no. we do not even know. Yeah, so then we'll have some hard decisions to make. But, and I think that commissioners are well well aware of it. That you know, with the way we're recategorizing some things, mm -hmm. some of this major not ma but a lot of money is capital. I call capital money, which no longer can be capital money. Right. It needs to. But, but in fairness to commissioners, they've done this for five years. Absolutely. So it wasn't like they were just doing it one year, not no, the next. No, they've no. been very no, good to us. Yes. But uh, it now will just be in a different category, which, you know, I certainly understand the commissioners. Capital is a little easier to control than, than, yes. than reoccurring uh, operating. Yes. So uh, when we have our, our um, biweekly state meetings, and it's been a frustration of ours because w we need to know the revenue numbers. And we, we were told that um, be prepared to do budget amendments because we're still working on the numbers, which is very frustrating as a group because they're still trying to unwrap the blueprint and, and um, with the calculations because it's a completely different f funding structure that they have. And the funding structure was based upon, with the blueprint, it was based upon 19's number when the legislative services did their initial estimates. They didn't account for declining enrollment, but declining enrollment has happened across the state for the last two years. And so what a lot of districts are facing is from the state aid side is that the funding, how can it be there to support blueprint? Because um, um, Blueprint is supposed to take you above and beyond. Right. And to what, enhance, mm -hmm. not to make you whole. Right. Yeah. And right now, we don't know the numbers, but we're feeling like it's barely going to make us whole. If not, some districts are going to be in, you know, in a, in a negative um, but, from the prior years. You know, it's just, it's very interesting how water goes downhill. So there's a lot of things from the state. <laughs> but they can mandate stuff and tell us what we're going to do, but then sit there and say, wait, we're going to tell you how to fund it later. Wait and make some or decisions. Or not fund it at all. Or not right. funding at all. Right. And, you know, when we have to make these decisions and prioritize them, which I think we've all heard from our constituents, that we know what we want, what we need. Um, and in all fairness, we have to paint our buildings, but people don't see that until they go into a school and it doesn't look right, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's stuff we can't neglect because if we neglect it this year, it's gonna be twice as bad next year. Right. You know, so we have a real issue there. And uh, I, what's it, 14 million square feet we do? 1.4 million. 1.4 million. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of, lot of buildings that, that with, and it's not like, it's like a supermarket. Mm -hmm. the people are in and out all the time. Yeah. It's yep. not like an office where five people go in in the morning and five people come out in the evening. We've got 7,000 students using every door, mm -hmm. every room, every hall. Every, every bathroom. bathroom. I mean, and then you know, it's it's well used, and it should be. Mm -hmm. But it but it, there's a cost. Things wear out. 
Well, mm -hmm. thanks for the good news. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, wait, there's more. No, no I know. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm just on. So, um, I would definitely ask you to review. If you have any questions, if you can email Dr. Sands and, and we can come up with maybe an, uh, for, so she can get to, to me with a, um, we'll do a, um, mm -hmm. we'll do a release of any questions and answers that has as a yeah. group because some may have the same question right. or not. Boy, correct yeah. answers. I like this. There's 110 things you put out here. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone has a reason. There'll be probably questions every board member has, which we can all, you know, give Dr. Salins, and then she'll probably refer us to. Well, Mrs. last Towers. year we had a rolling text, you know, rolling message board where everybody yeah, would put it, it on. Yeah, it can send stuff, and you know, there's gonna. It was very yeah. helpful last year. Can I speak to Ms. Bent's question? Oh, you yes. had asked about computers, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and can you ask your question again, just so I make sure I have the right answer? So for the costs that we have for the two sets of computers, are they inclusive of maintenance, replacement, the whole nine yards, or is that a yeah. separate charge? No, it is included, okay. and um, it's they will be under fac uh, factory warranty as well as um, five through eight has a third party, and nine through 12 has um, an additional Perfect. coverage as well. There so I just ask. So if, if we look at the uh, first tab underneath here, this is what we received as far as our preliminary state aid calculations. I'm not going to go into each of them um, this meeting because they may change, but I want you uh, to bring to your attention on the first page um, at the bottom where it says note the FY23 budget includes a 57.3 million hold harmless for state compensatory education program. So this is just for one year. They're gonna hold us harmless. So in 23, that could potentially go away. This year they're hold us harmless. Mm -hmm. For 23, right. yes. This year we do have it, yes. And I, you know, another thing we talked about- this past year. Yeah, is, and, and we're talking about state. Right. What concerns me the next hammers and come down on is this federal yeah. funding mm -hmm. with this uh, Title One and um, uh, free lunch and you know because everybody's getting it now so nobody is signing up for it. That's the right. So yeah. you know our schools in certain areas that are heavily funded through Title One. If somebody that you know, I don't know how we get back on that. I mean, it's not just us. It's that's another state issue or exactly. every federal. every federal every issue, but every county it's the same issue. But that could be a real hammer. Is there a way to get people to sign up even though they're getting it free? Just okay. ask so them to try. sign up. I mean, Mr. Yeah. Pinder, did you want to just share what you did, you know, with your staff? We we had people knocking down the doors and or knocking on doors, not knocking them down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, went out email, phone calls, really to get it out there. Yes, uh, you know, everything is free for this year. But, you know, we still need you to do the application process so we can verify the numbers to move up. And it just wasn't our school system. There was other, all school systems in the state of Maryland saw a decrease in it. It was just hard to really get through that, hey, we still need you know, the process to be followed. We almost need to stop free lunches for about a month. And make <laughs> yep. people, people re register. Get them to sign and up. Sit there and say, wait a second, nobody, I mean, it's not the way to do it. You can't do that. But, but I mean, somehow you got to, you know, really um, hit the bell and sit there and say, you know, yeah. this is gonna, and I understand people not doing it. You're getting it, why, why do I want, why would my child want to sign this up if your child's right. not signing up? Because, well, you know, why? We also know that, that potentially those numbers have increased because with mm -hmm. the pandemic, we have, right. I believe to be more need out there. Mm -hmm. And so that's even disheartening because that could actually help our district even more, um, knowing that if that number had increased from prior to COVID, but, um, well, is, is there any way to. over the summer to sit there and say we need people to, to, to you know send it out to everybody and say if you if oh, you're yeah. if you're qualified for free and reduced lunches or something you need to sign up even though they might be free next year but at least try to get this out there yeah we can and try to incentivize it uh -huh. somehow we'll have to to see what's the cheapest way to try to incentivize it yeah it's like I said we really that a lot of different ways to try to get it out there, but it just was, all right, if we're already getting it, why do we have to fill out? Right. It was just yeah. trying to overcome that hurdle that couldn't be overcome. But at some point, yes, I mean, it's going to, you know, that part will end and it has to go back to 
the previous ways of the application, the process. application process. Do we have an idea when this everybody will be getting, when this is going to end or we don't know? It should be the end of this year. I mean, they've only approved it through the end of this year, through, through June, for that, for everybody to get free. So if we don't hear Calendar anything. Calendar year or school year? School Just year. for the end of the school year. Okay. So if we don't hear anything in concrete, we could send something out in June saying, free and reduced, to our best of our knowledge, free and reduced lunches have oh, ceased and we need to sit there and have people sign up. Mm -hmm. For the uh, coming year. For the coming year. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And if they haven't told us, then I just assume they're not gonna do it. Is there a deadline to have numbers in though to, for the Title I? Like to yes, there are yes. certain yeah. deadlines for that, absolutely. We and still be able to hit it if we would. Yeah, and mm -hmm. there's there's um, specific deadlines for for September one account, then your free and reduced count, mm -hmm. and then your um, Title One stuff. So they're all varying through September and October. Mm -hmm. I believe the last date is October 30th for all yes. of them put together, but I'm not positive. So I would like to give a close eye on that and see what yeah. we can oh, do. Oh yes. You know, when we'll come May, June. Yeah. You know, get this out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next item in the budget book is going to be the budget survey. As brought up before, when, when we go through this budget process, um, we have to be mindful of the input that we receive from our stakeholders there too as well. So that's included in this section. In tab four is our enrollment, which I th thought would be helpful to take a look at. The uh, enrollment from 930 of 21, you can see the change from last year at 47 students. So that would be under tab three. Do you mind right. if I ask? Do we know how many students do we have that um, do, that we that we pay to have them travel out of the county to be to get mm -hmm. educated or whatever we're setting them out for? How many students do we have? Oh, um, for our um, non-public placement travel outside the county, um, I, I would have to check and get that number for you. I don't know off the top of my head. No, I honestly don't know either. <laughs> You have one here, 10. Is it on the page? Uh, under tab three, I, I, I assume that's what this means. Non-public, yes it is. Yes, it's right there, 10, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have to oh, have yes, a, a dollar that. amount for transportation costs and how much we spend sending those, yeah, educating on outside the 10, just for those 10? Um, we, we could okay. pull that for you. Which year, this year or last year? Item. Or last year might be difficult with COVID. Yeah, it's so it's okay. just, yeah. And wasn't that on the expenditure report? We actually, um, we, I'm not sure if we break that out separate or oh, not, okay. but we'll have to see. Okay. Any other questions for the for Jane right now? I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here. Oh, yeah. A lot of good information and a lot of probably questions that we really can't answer until we get better numbers from the state, but I think all board members need to get in contact with the superintendent and then she can send us to whoever department needs to answer whatever question. Yeah, absolutely. Or you could, or you could have Carrie, facilitate it. And have uh, Carrie sit there and um, mm -hmm. you know, keep a log of questions because I think uh, Tammy or had a good yeah. thing where last year we had a thing for a Google Doc. Of well, some that, that, that is statue. Tammy or Helen asked something. Right. The whole board could know it and say, "Yeah, that was a good question." I didn't yeah. think about. We can we can it's go. A great idea. I, can I, I just ask one more time? So, you said this Friday they're going to have which numbers for us? They're, they're, they talked about releasing updated state aid draft numbers, okay. updating that, as well as. They're going to try their best, is the, the words that they use, for the maintenance of effort calculation for the county piece. Okay. To actually give us some hard numbers. Yes. yes. Or to actually give us a form on how to calculate it because there's right. still debate whether that two and That's just a formula. That's not the number. That's just a... Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And then we would calculate But wasn't it. there also another uh, meeting like next Thursday or Friday, uh, another one about the blueprint? Wasn't there another... Did I miss... Misunderstand, and I think they're all lapped up in just this. Yeah, I don't know that that's necessarily just about budget. Necessarily, the blueprint, the AIB is meeting next week again. They're they're talking about timelines, but I don't know that. Okay, it's... that's what, that might have been what I was thinking I, of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any other questions? 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hey, there is more to this budget <laughs> to that, but a lot of that also does with uh, negotiations and stuff, which we will have to discuss in closed session. Um, does anybody else have any, Dr. Sam, do you have something? Well, I didn't know if the board wanted to entertain discussing February 16th agenda yeah. or lack thereof. Well, right now we have an, our work session for the 16th, board meeting on the 2nd, uh, uh, we're holding open the 8th and the 16th another work session. As president, I have had no request for next Wednesday, but do you have anything this on the agenda? I, I don't. Um, I, I wanted to present to the board that, um, you know, if there's no need to meet on the 16th, on the 23rd of February, you will, before you have the NOM recurring in the capital budget, um, those items are set. So I'd prefer to have that meeting to focus on those two items in March, on March 2nd. Um, I'd like to propose uh, an update on strategic planning and our new website on the 9th um, and, and, the, and the budget approval on the 2nd. But I wanted to also say that we have the 9th on the books. If the board would prefer to move the budget approval process to March 9th and just focus on the budget approval that night, that's fine. Otherwise, again, that the ninth, we don't have anything else necessarily, you know, in stone for that. So that budget meeting could either fall on March 2nd or on March 9th, whatever is preference to the board. And then on the 16th uh, blueprint update, which would go to um, what the IAB, uh, I, the AIB is offering for timelines. And I'm, I'm convinced that we will have some pretty significant timeline shifts in, in reporting. And so that would be a good opportunity to report out. So you're talking about having February 23rd as the next meeting? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I won't be here. So I just, I just want to let everybody know that you can have it anyway. I mean, you oh, have yeah. necessary stuff to do. Okay, Helen, what, as far as what we just heard, do you have any, what do you have well, any? Well, I would like to, if we could do the budget on the 9th, I, okay. I have a, I was going to race back from a meeting that I do out of town on the second because I wanted to do the budget. So if we could hold the budget to the okay. ninth, but that's the only preference. Otherwise, to I agree. accommodate Ms. Harper, we can do it. You know, I don't. Hey, mind. well, let's then. And I think the, the, the more time it gives us, it doesn't hurt because yes. I know Jane's going to have all these numbers and the states can work with you, mm -hmm. but they might not get back in touch with you. Okay. So I think put it from the second to the ninth if it works for you yes. and, and Ms. Harper. Yeah. And also I think gives you another week Thank you. to firm up stuff. So let's do the ninth as far as that's when we'll work on approval of the budget. We will still have our meeting on our regular scheduled meeting on the second. Right, but can, can we double back to the 16th for February? Uh, okay, right now the 16th, I'm hearing that that's correct. not necessary. Does anybody need anything on that date? Because we are more than willing to. Yeah, we're more than willing. Does anybody, any staff or anybody need, do you? You don't. I don't need it. And then, but do you need something on the 23rd? But the 23rd, I need the non recurring in the capital budget. Okay. Is that good that for would be the 23rd? Yeah, good for no, that's fine. To go over it? To go over it for approval. Okay. And then it would go back. Once once this board approves it, it would go over to the commissioners for them to approve. And so I need that timeline in there so that they can approve it at the Make their sure March you have schedule. three members here, sir, for the 23rd. Well, I'll be here. Okay. I'll be here. Okay. There three. you go. Okay. okay. All right, so cancel the okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Could I like please ask for an email of all that stuff just so I can keep up? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay, it can be posted on board docs. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. So we're going to cancel the next meeting work session on the 16th, and that will be moved to the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And that's when we will do our uh, capital. Do you need a motion for that, Mr. Smith? Or just well, I'm just going to say it, and then we can okay. make a motion there. if you want to. Yep. Um, Go ahead. Then we'll have a regular meeting on the 2nd. Mm -hmm. We'll have a meeting on the 9th, which will be our budget approval, tentatively budget approval. Okay. Okay. And on the 9th, you said you could make it, Helen? Mm-hmm. Shannon? I'll be there. Tammy might not. No, the March 9th? My, that's the budget yeah. approval, right? March 9th, March 9th yes. You'll be here. Okay, so okay, we're good for that. Yeah. Um, and then the 16th will just be our normal work session, our work session, I'm just letting you know will be a blueprint update okay, right. that's fine. with all your pre-K okay. stuff and all of your timelines and everything. So I don't think we really need a motion. I think this needs to be posted, That's fine. It? it needs to be posted on the website that we're not having a meeting next week, but on the 23rd. Right. And uh, Ms. Dennis has, she's taking her head yes, so as long as Ms. Dennis has it, it'll go up. <laughs> and that will be posted on our board docs for the public. Um, any questions, you know, contact us. Okay. Any other things from this evening's meeting? No, sir. 
Uh, so, we are, we, so we're not even going to go over the draft budget? We're not going to go through any of that tonight? A lot of that has to do with negotiations. And uh, everything else in this thing has to think. Oh, I'm just talking about that. Everything budget. behind that tab. Yeah. Thank you everything very much. Everything else has yes. things. So we're going to okay. do that. We will, we will be going over that, but uh, Thank you. we haven't done that yet. Um, Got it. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? So, uh, pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance, evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, and any other matter personal ma personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals and to discuss negotiations. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.